So, hello, folks, and welcome to another episode on NetSport Radio, uh, Insights with NetSupport. Uh, and I'm really pleased um, that today we have a great guest to, to try and unpick some of the key topics around leadership, skills, young people, mentorship, and hopefully plenty more. So a big welcome to the show to Adam Mendler. Adam, welcome to the show. Al, thank you for having me. Excited to be here. Uh, looking forward to chatting with you, Adam. Um, I'm going to give a very brief bio for you. I've had to abridge it quite significantly because you are <laughs> clearly a man of many talents. Um, but as a very brief synopsis for those listening in, Adam is an entrepreneur, a writer, speaker, educator, and nationally recognized authority on leadership. Adam is the CEO of the Veloz Group, where he's co-founded and oversees ventures across a wide variety of industries. And a man from my own heart is also the creator and host of the business and leadership podcast, 30 Minute Mentors. And I see you've had conversations with 150 plus really interesting and inspiring people. So I'm really looking forward to talking about that first, if that's all right, Adam. Oh, we can talk about that as long as you'd like. Uh, nothing that excites me more than talking about 30 Minute Mentors. Excellent. Well, I'm interested because you've got some fantastic different people and a real cross spectrum of, of leaders and inspiring voices. So let's kick things off. Tell me about the podcast and the amazing list of people you've interviewed over the years. And one thing I always like to also just kind of weave into that is perhaps just about where the idea of the podcast really kind of came from. Yeah. So uh, firstly, Al, thanks for having me on. Excited to be here with you. Excited to be here with your listeners. Looking forward to our conversation. I wanted to give a broad audience of listeners access to the best mentors possible. And I'm a big believer in the importance of having a mentor in your life, a traditional mentor who you can get together with whenever you want. Maybe you go out to lunch once a month or grab coffee every few weeks or so, or have a phone call or text message. But I'm also a big believer in a concept that I call mini mentors. And what is a mini mentor? A mini mentor could be someone who you might only talk to once. Maybe you talk to them once every five years or once every 10 years. Maybe you never even talk to them, but you learn from them by osmosis. I've had guests on my podcast who have described mentors that they've had in their life, traditional mentors who have made incredible impacts in their life, in their career, but they've also described many mentors, including people who they've never met, Oprah Winfrey, Steve Jobs, who have been just as impactful. And a mini mentor can be someone who, through my podcast, you listen to for 30 minutes and it might be one nugget that they share. It might be a five minute clip. It might be that 30 minute conversation that shifts your perspective, that changes the way you're thinking that allows you to see things through a slightly different lens. Maybe you approach your business differently. Maybe you approach your life differently. And every week I'm bringing on someone who has made it to the top in whatever they've pursued, whether it's business, hall of fame, athletes, the most successful political leaders, the most successful military leaders, really it's a platform for leaders to listen to where my goal is to give audiences the best, most actionable insights possible to allow them to become more effective in their lives, more effective in their careers, more effective as leaders. That makes sense. And there's, there's, it's an interesting one. I mean, I, much like yourself, I, I wear a few hats straddling between the commercial world and the education space. And, and I'd say in the last five years, now more than ever, there's greater pressure on leaders and as such, probably a greater need for that mentorship role, whether it is, as you say, the, uh, the, the longstanding familiar and regular or those mini mentors that can just inspire and, and give you that motivation to the next step. Do you see the same from a US perspective that there's an increase in the value of mentorship? Absolutely. I, I can tell you just from my own personal journey, mentorship is essential. And when I share my own personal journey that also extends to my journey interviewing the most successful leaders in America. So I've done interviews with more than 500 of the most successful leaders across country, more than 150 on my podcast, but more than 500 across all of my media platforms. 
And I can tell you that in my conversations with the most successful leaders, they share how impactful mentorship has been on their journey. How, again, whether it's a traditional mentor or a mini mentor, the power of mentorship is essential. You can't get there alone. It's very, um, it's very romantic to uh, look at someone highly successful and say that they were born great, that they were born with this gift and just cruise to the top because of this greatness. But one of the things that I hear over and over and over from my interviews with the most successful people is you're not born with greatness. Greatness is something that you develop, that you work toward. And how do you attain greatness? Well, you do it by first and foremost, learning from the greats, aspiring for greatness, studying those who have made it to the top, understanding what they've done to become so successful, recognizing, well, what are the key characteristics of people who have made it to the very top and whatever it is you're trying to do? And what can I learn from them? So, um, you know, one thing to just kind of finish this thought out is uh, obviously, uh, you know, education, essential to you, essential to your audience. And the best leaders are lifelong learners. The best leaders understand that no matter how much success they've attained, in order to attain that next level of success, in order to take that next step, it's not a matter of what they've done in the past. It's a matter of what they're going to do tomorrow. And it all comes down to having a growth mindset, to having a dedication to lifelong learning. And it really comes down to having a sense of humility, understanding that if you're the smartest person in the, in the room, you're in the wrong room. Surrounding yourself with people who are smarter than you, surrounding yourself with people who you can learn from, recognizing that no matter who is around you, you could learn from them. They could be a Fortune 500 CEO, or in the words of a US ambassador who I interviewed, they could be the shoeshine guy. No matter who it is, you have an opportunity to learn from everyone around you. Take advantage of that opportunity. The most successful people are continually taking advantage of that opportunity. I'm loving the lifelong learning. It's something that is a mantra that I often share about and um, often also express that, you know, what makes you successful in business? The answer is always employ amazing people that work with, around you. Um, one of the things I was just going to tag to, to end this kind of first bit about the, the rationale behind the podcast do you think people perhaps on their own personal journey, it, it, perhaps in the early stages, feel that saying they feel they need a mentor is a sign of weakness until they realize that actually that's part of the growth mindset? Uh, absolutely not. It, anyone who says that I need a mentor and is viewed as weak, a shame on the person viewing them as weak. Exactly. That's yeah. That says a lot more about the person uh, criticizing than about the person asking for help. I think anyone who asks for help should be lauded. That's a sign of strength. That's a sign of self-awareness. If you're not asking for help, then you're in trouble. Again, exactly. yeah. the most successful people are the ones who are asking for help. I've done interviews with more than 500 of the most successful people in America, Fortune 500 CEOs, founders of household name companies, Hall of Fame athletes, four-star generals and admirals. Each and every one of the people who I've interviewed will tell you right off the bat, they're continually looking for help. A lot of the guests who I've had on my podcast are listeners of my podcast. Why? Because they're looking for help. They want to learn from the best. They want to learn from those who have made it to the top. And if you don't have that mindset, if you don't have that mentality, you're not going to make it to the top. So if someone tells you that you're weak for asking for help, if someone tells you that you're weak for asking for a mentor, that's a person you want to avoid. That's a person you want to stay away from. That is a person who's weak. I'm into that, sir. Thank you. That's, that's a really good way to sort of segue into, into my next question. I really want to unpick with you, which is, you know, you've talked about the amazing breadth of people that you've had the the pleasure to speak with and get insights from what would you say are some of the best insights you've gleaned from your guests 
are there any common themes and are there any surprising themes that have come about? So we spoke about one, which I think is a really important one, the power of lifelong learning. And just to double down on that, when I started the podcast, I really thought that this kind of content would be, and this is something that might be interesting to your audience, given the focus on uh, education and educators. I thought my audience would consist of emerging leaders. I thought that this content would really resonate with people who are in college and graduate school, early to mid career professionals. And what I found is yes, that is a good chunk of my audience. It has been just as resonant with the most successful leaders. And that's something that has been really surprising to me. But uh, as I've come to understand, it makes perfect sense because the most successful leaders are that way because of this reason. They're continually trying to learn. They're continually trying to grow. A key theme of, of the podcast, something that you hear over and over and over again from the great leaders who I interview is no matter what field you're leading in, you could be running a Fortune 500 company, you could be running a small business, you could be leading on the basketball court, you could be leading in the military. The core principles of leadership are universal. And what are those core principles of leadership? You need to lead with love. You need to care about the people you're leading. You can't lead through fear and intimidation. That just doesn't work. There is a perception that even in the military, to be successful, you need to lead through fear and intimidation. There, I don't know how popular it is in the UK, but in the US, uh, A Few Good Men, one of the great movies from when I was a kid, Jack Nicholson plays uh, one of these uh, you know, hardcore, hard-ass um, military leaders. And I did an interview with Admiral Jim Stavridis, who was the Supreme Allied Commander of NATO. And what he told me is that when people think of military leaders, the first thing they think of is Jack Nicholson from A Few Good Men, that character. Again, for your listeners who may not be familiar with that character, that character is a character who leads through fear and intimidation, yelling and screaming. And, and what Admiral Stavridis told me is that that's the opposite of how you lead in the military. And I could tell you that from my conversations with countless four-star generals, three-star generals, admirals, that's 100% correct. The most successful leaders in the military, just like the most successful leaders in corporate America, just like the most successful leaders everywhere, are those who understand that to be successful, you need to inspire those around you. You need to enable those around you to become their best selves by empowering them, by creating an environment that that essentially people want to be in, um, build a winning culture. So these are the themes that we dive into. I could go on and on and on about this, but uh, as you could tell, I mean, those are a few things that um, are commonalities and that we tend to dive pretty deeply into. And it's, it's perhaps not a surprise to hear that there are those common themes about those people who have been high performing throughout their careers, that they are the ones that are constantly thriving to learn more and also recognize that you bring people along on the journey not drag them behind you so um yeah and obviously anybody listening can find out more we'll we'll provide contact details at the end of the show head across to your site and have a listen to some of those episodes so there's plenty to choose from to inspire um just segueing slightly um in dealing with you know we talk about different generations but in dealing with young people today do you think there are any specific leadership skills that we should be teaching in our K through 12 schools? And, and does that differ based on age group of students? I, I think it's a great question. And I think that something that might be overlooked, and I think it's overlooked broadly, not specifically only within K through 12 students, but I think that it's overlooked in general, but I think that it is particularly something that would be of great value um, within K through 12 is 
teaching the following, which is, you know, I, I'm a very big believer that most people in life are bad at most things. I, I think that, you know, Al, I could tell you that if I had to give you the list of everything that I'm bad at, uh, we would be here all day, all night, all week. Uh, it's current, we're recording this end of November, certainly through the end of all the rest of the year, maybe even into next year. But we're all good at a few things and we all have that one thing about us that makes us special. And I believe that the most important thing we should be teaching students in K through 12 is there is something about you that is special, that is unique, that is different. Understand what that is and lean into it. Don't run away from it. We need to embrace our uniqueness. Our uniqueness is a blessing, not a curse. Our uniqueness is what makes us great. And again, this is something that I think is important no matter what age you are, but especially at, in that age group, because it's never too early or too late to get on this journey, the journey of self-discovery. But the earlier you get on it, the more successful you'll be in life, the more successful you'll be in business, the more successful you'll be as a leader. Before you can effectively lead others, you need to be able to lead your own life. Mm. Before others are going to follow you, you need to become a person worth following. And it all starts with this. It all starts with understanding who you are, developing a sense of self-awareness, developing the, a sense of self-confidence, and understanding what it is about you that makes you special. So uh, what, what, you know, is that a particular... Um, uh, how do I summarize that in one word? I'm not sure. I teach some leadership courses at UCLA. And the first class I teach every quarter that I teach, I dive into this. When I give keynotes to different organizations, I cover this. So I, I think this is relevant, period. And um, I hope that this is really incorporated as early as possible. It's really interesting you talk about that, Adam, and it translates to a very um, heated conversation we're having within education in the UK, Europe, and I'm sure it will translate across the US, but I'd love your thoughts. You know, we're very much aware that there's been, over many years, a, a narrowing of the curriculum around core academic subjects. And, and finally now there's a, a recognition that actually we need to be teaching uh, children at all ages about skills and about resilience and about self-worth and about critical thinking and about much more of the tools that will arm them to continue that love of learning and love of life through into their adult years as much as there is about pure knowledge acquisition so that sounds to me like that pretty much resonates with with the the angle that you're coming from which is no matter what the age we're wanting to try and empower young people to be the best that they can be absolutely absolutely uh Whoever is making that argument, if they want me on their side, I'm on your side. If you want me to, to come to your meetings, I, I'm in Los Angeles, so it might be hard logistically, but fly me out there. I'll be there. I love it. Yes, I support you. I believe in that fully. I can tell you that it, just in my own personal educational journey, um, it wasn't really until I was in college that I discovered the joy of learning. And I, I was an okay student, you know, growing up, my grades were pretty good. But it wasn't until I was in college that I truly excelled academically. And there was a, a very clear correlation and causation, a uh, very clear connection between my uh, success academically and uh, my, my interest in academics. When I walked onto college, the college campus, my freshman year of USC, uh, for the first time in my life, I was actually interested in what I was studying. I was actually inspired academically. I had professors who knew how to connect. I had professors who were able to present information in a way that was interesting to me. Um, the whole environment was an environment that was conducive to learning. 
for the first time in my life. And so much of that is, um, again, I'm, I'm in the world of education and that I teach courses, but I'm, I'm not an edu- I'm not an administrator, so I don't pretend to be an expert in that area. But just having gone through this, I can tell you that um, that yes, there's so much to this beyond just what's in the textbook, and um, it really starts with creating an environment where students are going to be their best selves, where students are going to want to learn where students are going to want to take that next step and that next step and that next step. And as we've been talking about, learning doesn't end when your time in school ends. Absolutely. I've I've been learning a lot more (laughs) as I have a master's degree, but I've been learning a lot more uh, than I've ever learned before uh, from the day I, I stopped paying tuition. So as I'm sure everyone listening to this podcast will uh, will attest to. Absolutely. But lots of what you, re- you, that you say really resonates with what's happening internationally. One thing um, that I often talk about is around the world, we have, a, we have a measure of how each of our national school systems are doing compared to each other using the PISA rankings based on the performance of our, our student of 15. And, and we have league tables of which are the high performing school systems around the world. And even now, they're now looking at changing that measure from academic attainment to looking at ways to manage what they refer to as school systems that foster human flourishing. Actually, the broader sense of a child's self-worth and how they value themselves and how they're equipped as the, the, the broader individual. And that aligns absolutely with the things you're talking about, Adam, finding the thing that you're good at, embracing it, leaning on it, and so on. So it, it's great to hear, but I fear that you might end up being all our listeners mini mentor for this evening if I don't move <laughs> on to another question. So let's wrap up on the mini mentor thing. I, which... I just I just want to I just want to um Al, I just want to add one yeah. thing, which is I, I love it. I'm really encouraged to hear that. I'm really encouraged to hear that there is this movement going on. Um that what I'm talking to college students and graduate students and corporate America about what I'm talking to my listeners on my podcast about that. This is going on in K through 12. And, and if anyone working in this space is interested in connecting with me and exploring synergies, uh, please reach out because I love this. And I'm, I'm actually really, really excited and enthused to hear it because it's, it's extremely exciting for me to understand that there is an effort being made to get this started at an earlier age because again it's never too early or too late to get on this journey Uh, i talked to people i gave a keynote a couple weeks ago and a lot of people were in their 50s and 60s never too late but the earlier you get started the better it is just and i love that that there's this effort to get started early on and man if i could be a part of it uh, please uh, connect with me. I'm getting the sense you're quite passionate about this topic, Adam, which is lovely to hear because it's very much from a like mind with myself. So um, we will definitely make sure we give all your contact details at the end. And please do reach out with Adam because there's a kindred spirit there. We'd love to share his experience and insights with you. So wrapping things up, we talked about you being a mini mentor for the evening. On the broader topic of mentorship, you know, this is really interesting to me for particularly from a perspective of students getting skill-based training. Um, how do you kind of see that trajectory of broadening the, the academic horizons, the career opportunities? Because one of the things that clearly you're talking with us often with a slightly older cohort and with business leaders from across the spectrum, but the workplace, the, the skills required are constantly shifting, aren't they, Adam? So are we not relying more on the, the human capabilities, the strength of the individual rather than specific knowledge now? When I was a sophomore at USC, University of Southern California, I was taking a political science class. So I graduated from USC with a degree in business and a degree in political science. And there was a guest speaker in my political science class. And that guest speaker was a guy by the name of Stephen Sample. Stephen Sample was the president of USC. 
Stephen Sample, for listeners who might not be familiar with him, was one of the great leaders in the world of higher ed. So Stephen Sample uh, took over USC when it was not a particularly highly ranked university, and he turned it into one of the most prestigious academic uh, institutions in America. Great leader, did great things with the school. And he was our guest speaker for the day. And one of the things he said to our class was he said, in your lifetimes, you are going to have five to six different careers, not jobs, but careers. And the 19 year old Adam was sitting there in the classroom thinking, I really admire Stephen Sample, but this old man has no idea what he's talking about because I know exactly what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be running a baseball team. And I, I've had, you know, I might, I might have five or six different careers right now. So I've had way more than five or six different careers and I'm not even 40 yet. So what was the lesson? What was the point? The idea was that you need to have a set of skills that will equip you not for one job, not for one career, but for five to six different careers. And it's not about developing a, a set of skills. It's not about taking a set of courses that is going to confine you to one particular area. It's about developing a set of skills that will equip you for whatever is next, because we don't know what's next. We don't know what's around the corner, but what we do know is that if we have a set of skills that can prepare us, period, for whatever challenges come our way, we'll be prepared. And that was his message. And that was the kind of education that he tried to equip students with. And that was one of the reasons why it was encouraged to get a degree in business and also get a degree in political science. So my message to students, my message to educators is really the same message that Stephen Sample shared with the 19 year old Adam. The only difference is that fast forward 20 years later, we're going to have more than five or six different careers. That number is going to be higher now. And it, it's truly about understanding what we can do so that we can be prepared for whatever is next, even though we don't know what next looks like. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Adam. And certainly for all of our mini mentorees who are listening to your words of wisdom. And, and there's some um, there's something for everybody there that really resonates. Uh, I'm really keen that people can dip into some of the episodes, your 30 minute mentor sessions with so many informative voices. So the important bit for anybody listening in who would like to listen to those episodes or get in touch with you, where should we direct them to Adam? Al, I try to make it really easy. So it's just my name, Adam Mendler. You can go to my website, adammendler.com. You can uh, find me on social media at Adam Mendler. That's at Adam Mendler on Twitter, at Adam Mendler on Instagram. My podcast, 30 Minute Mentors, is uh, spelled out, the word 30 Minute Mentors. It's available on every podcasting app. However, you're listening to this great podcast, you can find 30 Minute Mentors. And uh, yeah, please reach out. I'm really excited and encouraged by what's going on. This is, uh, I, I know that it's evening in uh, your neck of the woods, but it's morning for me. And what a great way to start the morning by hearing about uh, this great movement. I'm fired up. Well, it's been my pleasure. And for anybody listening who'd like to share some like-minded thoughts about some of the things that we've talked about from the education system, the skill system over here in the UK or Europe or the Middle East or wherever you're listening from, please do check out the links below this podcast episode and get in touch with Adam. And um, it seems like you'll have plenty to talk about. So again, Adam, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate you sharing your insights and experience. It's been, um, it's been a fantastic chat. And um, yeah, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you, Al. Truly a pleasure. And thank you to your listeners.